Well, from Berkeley, California to the G20 meeting recently in Hamburg, Germany, a global surge in left-wing violence has left campuses burning and cities smoldering. In response to the chaos, the National Rifle Association released an ad that treats lawful self-defense as the answer to escalating civil disorder. Here it is. Make them scream racism and sexism and xenophobia and homophobia to smash windows, burn cars, shut down interstates and airports, bully and terrorize the law abiding until the only option left is for the police to do their jobs and stop the madness. And when that happens, they'll use it as an excuse for their outrage. Well, weirdly enough, the video wasn't well received on the left. They immediately accused Dana Lash, who you just saw there in the video, of calling for civil war and inciting racial violence. Black Lives Matter, which some say actually has incited racial violence, fired back with their own video. Here it is. Until the only option left is for black people to disrupt the systems that keep us oppressed and build the kinds of communities in which we want to live. And when that happens, they'll use it as an excuse to kill more of us. We know that we are not safe, but we are not scared either. We will continue to produce media, teach students, march and protest to not only protect the First Amendment as fiercely as the NRA protects the Second, but to protect our lives from gun-toting racists. We demand the NRA immediately remove their dangerous propaganda videos narrated by conservative talk radio host Dana Lash and Grant Stinchfield. So we're for the First Amendment, but we demand that the video is removed. <laughs> Dana Lash joins us tonight. Uh, what's your response to that, Dana? Well, Tucker, thanks so much for having me. Well, that's actually incredibly ironic, and you just pointed that out. They say that they're for the First Amendment, but yet they want to do quasi-censorship, being that it's not actually a government entity, but they want to quasi-censor my First Amendment rights. Tucker, there's nothing at all wrong. There's nothing exaggerated. There's nothing at all bad that I said in the original ad. In fact, I think that that's the common ground that we should all come together on. We all condemn violence. We condemn the people who sanction violence. We we condemn the violence itself, the people who endorse it, and the people who want to pretend that it doesn't happen so that it can go on and they can further ignore it. That's what we condemn. Um, but this ad, it doesn't make sense. Look, Black Lives Matter, I think, began earnestly. I think this began as an organization, Tucker, that really maybe wanted to solve some of the discord between the black community and police officers. And that's a noble thing. But what it has turned into and the infusion of Soros cash, which, of course, there's a digital record out there about that, that's no good. And in fact, they've turned to fostering more division instead of solving it. It, does, it certainly does seem that way. And you, you can't, just for the record, be a, for the First Amendment and simultaneously demanding that people not be allowed to hear the opposing view, uh, I would say. so. But they're not the only yeah, ones, Black Lives Matter, who took issue with your ad, which really got a strong reaction, for sure, in progressive America. There's a women's march uh, planned, I think, tomorrow. I won't be going, in part a response to you, this ad in the National Rifle Association. What is it exactly? Yes. Yes, it is the Women's March, which, if you remember back in January, Tucker, they banned pro-life women. So it's some women only. It's not right. all women. They've banned any sort of gay Muslim groups. They've banned pro-life groups. They don't really like conservative women that believe in Second Amendment rights for all women. So it's a very discriminatory organization. And they've decided to react in this manner to me speaking truth. They've tried to smear it and go after me and say that I was inciting violence. But, Tucker, the crazy thing is, is that these organizers have said way more. They've said actual incendiary things, and they've supported some pretty dangerous people, people like Louis Farrakhan, people like Siraj Wahaj, who, if you remember, testified in defense of the blind sheik who yeah. actually thought that jihad was physical struggle and talked about that. What does that have to do with the Women's March? Why would people like that be involved? I, I have no idea because the, the men that they actually support don't believe really in women's rights. Louis Farrakhan thinks women should be home in the kitchen. And they've partnered with Moms Day Man, which is, which is Michael Bloomberg's uh, AstroTurf gun lobbyist organization. And they're just upset. I don't even, I'm not even sure that they know quite what they're upset about. Uh, but they've decided to march together along with Black Lives Matter, which I find kind of shocking considering that Michael Bloomberg, the founder of Moms Demand, believes in, quote, throwing young black men up against the wall and frisking them. That's a policy he supports to the point where 
he tried to stop the Aspen Institute from releasing video with him saying it. So Black Lives Matter hasn't released a statement on that, uh, and nor has Moms Demand it, uh, condemned it, and nor Tucker has the women's organization, the Women's March. They haven't condemned Linda Sarsour's call for jihad. So waiting for those videos. Well, I mean, a lot of this relates to this idea of intersectionality, if I'm even pronouncing it correctly, the, the notion that all these groups on the left with different aims are united together, but actually they seem at odds with each other. The whole thing seems a little bit illogical to me. I mean, you have people at a women's march who don't think women should be in the workplace. It doesn't really make sense. No, it does not. But the biggest thing about all of this, Tucker, and this is some of the ideology that these individuals actually promote, is that somehow leftism or progressivism has the patent on being a female. It has the right. patent oh, on being gay sure. or lesbian. It has the patent on being black or Muslim. And yeah. it doesn't. And that's what I find discriminatory. Well, and, and also silly. And thank you for correcting that. Dana, thanks a lot for coming on tonight. Thank you, Tucker.